Robert, fix it. Are you okay? I'm sorry I made you install Linux. I thought it was gonna be good, right? Linux the best. I miss Windows. Linux is hard. Look, man, don't make me look like a fool. You agreed to this. You have to get out there. Go back to Linux and show them how good it is. Get up! And we are ready. Okay, here we are. We reached the end of the trial of Linux in 30 days. So I've been using Linux for 30 days. I did boot into Windows once for something, but as far as daily use, I've been using this. This is not my desktop PC. This is the Mac that I was working with earlier, but it's the same. The nice thing about Linux is that no matter which computer you use it on, it's the same. The interface is the same, menu's the same, everything's the same. And it's free. So people like that. So I wanted to basically sum it up because I've made now so many videos about it. I don't want to go on and on and on, you know, into eternity. I just want to give you my overall opinion of it after all of this time. I can tell you the short answer is it's awesome. I wish somebody would have told me about this before. I know that people say it all the time, but these are internet people. If you did everything the internet said, then you would have a very harsh life. I can tell you that. <laughs> but if your buddy at the gym said, hey, you have to install Linux, then you might do it. So I wish I knew about it a long time ago, but what I did was I made a kind of a list here of, I'm just going to keep this up because it's funny. It's so weird to see a terminal just sitting there. Can you imagine if Windows, every time you wanted to install something, you had to go in the command prompt? <laughs> Nobody would use Windows, <laughs> but it's fine. So um, the first point I want to make is um, how easy is it to install? And it's, it's pretty easy. I mean, you download the thing, the image, I guess it is, and then you have to use some sort of image writing software. I used Rufus, and then you boot from that drive, and then you install Linux into the drive that you're using. You do have the option to dual boot to Windows, which you should probably do. I did not do that because I already had a Windows machine secondary and it installs. And actually in both cases with my PC and with the Mac, I did not have to download any additional drivers. Everything worked out of the box. So that's good. Um, it's too bad that you can't just pick up a Linux installer, you know, at your local Best Buy. I think that people would pay for that. I actually have people that pay for installer USBs locally, not for this, but for something else. So I think that if it was easier to install, more people would use it. But as far as how easy it was for me to install, it was very simple, very straightforward, no issues. The little, I had that hiccup with the partition thing, but that was just, that was me. I don't think other people would have that same problem. So as far as installation goes that's not a big issue so using mint or lit i'm sorry i keep saying mint using linux whichever linux you use how easy is it to use it i'm sorry let's say daily use daily use for me once everything was installed so I installed Chrome, I installed OBS, which I'm using to record this video here, see, and the applications that I needed, I installed Steam on my office PC just to see if it would work. 
the Steam game that I played worked fine. And most people, like I said before, most average people, they just turn on their computer and they go into Chrome. They don't even do anything else. Which is funny because why do you have Windows if you don't do anything in Windows? It's just Windows is like the platform to get to Chrome. If that was the case, you should just run, run Chrome OS, which I'm not sure if you can do on a PC, but for me as someone that used a Chromebook as their main computer for more than a year with no problems, it's the same thing. You're either launching Chrome from Windows or you're launching Chrome from Linux or you're launching Chrome from your iMac. It's always Chrome, no matter what. So for daily use, it's fine. For me, I can daily use it for my internet tasks, my, my everyday things. So email, YouTube, research, uh, image saving, uploading and downloading files, all of that stuff. I can use Linux, I can use a Mac, I could use a PC, I could use a Chromebook. Um, it, as far as playing games, that's different, but I don't really play games that much, so it's that's fine. It's okay for daily use, but I feel like there's going to be a situation where you have to have Windows at some point for something. So you might want the dual boot just so you can go back and do something else. There were several people that commented that said that they would love to use Linux every day, but they need something, a particular program to, for whatever reason, and then they can't do it in Linux for whatever reason. So that's why they have Windows. And that's what I was saying. Is it is it possible to have Linux as your only OS? For me, if it was 2019, 2019 me, 2020 me, I could have just used Linux and that's it because I used a Chromebook and that doesn't do anything. <laughs> All it does is run Chrome. And also as far as other things, it, the Linux worked with the Bluetooth, it worked with the Wi-Fi, it worked with my printer. If I had to for the rest of my life use Linux only for some reason I could I can't because I do gaming GPU reviews and some Windows things and also my cloud is still in Windows so I'm gonna have both side by side so what I decided to do instead of actually instead of having two computers what I think I'm going to do is I, I have two SSDs. So I have my Windows one and then I have my Linux one. So I'm going to put, I used to have two PCs side by side because I thought that was the way to go. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and put both SSDs in one PC. I will boot from the Linux one by default for regular things. And then when I want to do the gaming stuff, I'll just boot from the Windows one. And I, I don't want to dual boot because sometimes I change the PC or I might move. I just, I like having each OS on each drive, if that makes sense. Some people don't agree with that. That's fine. But you could potentially use this as your only OS. But I just, like I said, I feel like there's going to be a situation where you need Windows for something. Um, I wanted to add this actually... because I want to show you this real quick. We don't want to make this too long. So I installed this program right here called Plank. And what it does is it, whatever you recently used, it will put here. So if we go to, let's say, calculator. Okay, so now it's there, right? And then when you close it, it goes away. 
So this is like a Mac skin. And so it, I'm used to Mac a little bit because I used it for a couple months. And the thing with Mac is the program that you used to use all the time would always be here. And then you can pin it. So let's say we go here. And then you can say keep in dock. And this does have an auto hide feature. So if you're not using it, it'll just disappear and then you just have your screen. That's great. It's very customizable. The thing is, look what I had to do to install it. sudo app install plank and then it did all this stuff here did all this and then I had to type in plank preferences but I typed it wrong so then I had to put in plank minus minus or dash dash preferences and then that's where you get to the actual configuration I think plank Let's see preferences So there but you can also do it from here preferences so I don't mind typing in terminal commands it's just weird you, it's hard to tell people to do that that don't know what terminal is I'm a little bit familiar with it because I used Macs and I use terminal for in Mac about for close to a year for iPhone stuff. So I'm okay doing that. It's just that asking people to do that that don't have never used it before, it's, it, you know, that's just weird, right? And then look at this. So this program that I installed, it's called CheckRain. That's what I used to use for, for iPhone stuff. It's actually a Linux program, right? But I couldn't install it for some reason I was doing something wrong so I had to type in this and then I had to type in this and then I had to type in this and then <laughs> it works now watch here it's right here there it is that's the same program that I used to use on the Mac and now it's here but why did I have to do all these commands just to make it work? That's that's the only thing that bugs me. It's actually better in the long run because you can do more things this way. And I get now why people like it so much because you can you can configure the whole system any way you want. You can make this look like a probably an Amiga or a Windows XP or anything. That that's really cool. So I like that. It's just that it, that's really, for the average person, I think, a little bit hard to wrap your head around, especially if you've used Windows all your life. And so that's my only kind of hitch with Linux. But once you get used to it, it's fine. You just have to, you have to be open-minded is all I can say. So my final thoughts is, um, should you install this? I would say if you have an old computer, if you have a really old computer like a Dell Optiplex or a, an old Mac or something that does not support the latest software, you should definitely give it a try, especially Mint. It, I found it to be very simple and easy to install and easy to put the programs on and if you're only gonna run Chrome anyway then that's fine I, like I said uh, this computer that I'm talking to you on I set up for my mom and she's gonna use it just for Chrome and that's it so it's fine and it it's really fast I mean I, I booted into the Mac OS side of it the other day and it was horribly slow. I was di I was like dying. I was melting, waiting for things to happen. But here, everything's very snappy. Watch. Let me open sheet the calculator. Wait, this one. Boom, open. So this is like Excel. 
so yeah I mean it's it works great um, this quotes out okay so I think so one reason number one if you have an old computer reason number two if you are someone that wants to learn something new or if let's say if you're an older person and you're set in your ways it's really nice to learn something new and open your mind and kind of you know you you kind of jog that brain part you know the left side of your brain or the right side of your brain there is a learning curve but it's it it really opens your it's almost like reading i would equivalent this to reading like a good novel you know, you read the novel cover to cover. Sure, you can watch the movie, but when you read the book, it's really satisfying. And I, I would encourage people to just try it. It doesn't mean you have to use it. You can always take it off the computer, right? But at least try it because it really opens your mind to other things. And especially, also, if you're a very young person, I would tell you that this right here, this is your future because when I was in college, this is what we used to use to communicate way, way many, many years ago. And you might think, well, that's stupid. How can you talk to each other by text? Well, this software right here, all this, I guess you don't know, but the, all of this is what's running Businesses, banks, airports, hospitals, all of that. So if you want to get into computer knowledge outside of Fortnite, you should learn this. The, everybody should learn this. They, they should actually teach this in high school, I think. Because every system in the world, in one way or another, uses this language. So for the future... It would be good for you to know and that's why it was easy for me to pick up these things because I learned this in college not a, I, don't, I only studied it for a year but still it was it's everything makes sense here if, if you think this is all gibberish all of this makes sense when I read it every word makes sense to me it's almost like learning Spanish you know but yeah, that's the end of the 30 days. Unfortunately, I have to go back to Windows, which I already showed in the other video. I will keep this, though. And the plan going forward is I have an old Mac Mini. And I can't do anything with it. I can't upgrade the Mac OS. I can't run Windows on it. And so it's the perfect candidate to just run Linux specifically and hopefully set up a server of some sort and that PC or that Mac mini will be my my Linux permanent solution and then I'll have my you know my Linux drive in my PC also and I'm I'm hoping there's a way to make them talk to each other because that would be cool I assume that that's possible through the network and yeah but we're going back to windows sorry boys but we'll still be here anyway let me know what you think and we'll see you on the next one